There we go. Options. Um, set content. So apparently I can't set the content of the quick set or the set games or whatever, but I can still adjust the difficulty, turn on negations. Um, can set this to ultimate still. Um, it's just, I can't set the games themselves. Oh, shoot. I still can't escape this. Well, okay, that's great. Um, so apparently I can't set the difficulty because there's no way to set, to send an escape character to this DOS box instance, which is running under this web thing. So let's go back to full screen. Apparently the only thing I can set is the difficulty. Uh, whatever, I missed my chance. We'll pick challenge. Not born in the 20th century. Damn it. <laughs> uh, 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 okay. <laughs> Martin Van Buren. All right, there we go. We got one. Nice. Uh, Harrison Ford? No! Okay. Hubble. Oh, really? Okay, that was a guess. Grant Wood. Stonewall Jackson. George Catlin? Who is George Catlin? Okay. Um... Um, this is hard. Oh my gosh. Um, does anybody know? Because <laughs> I sure don't. <laughs> this is a great game. Oh man. At one point I thought that I'd just go ahead and like implement this and try to make it as difficult as possible. Um, just code it myself, but I don't need to do that. Because apparently this has already been done. The unknown muncher. No, uh, sure. What's the worst that could happen? In the weasel family. Um, um, you could learn a thing or two playing this game. Ferret? All right, Ferret is in the weasel family. Um, prairie dog? No. Badger? Okay. Um, what's this oh, copy thing? Nope. Mink? Tree Shrew does not fit in the weasel family. Hyenas? Not, oh. Oh, man. Wow, we got wrecked. North American or Caribbean countries. Um, Panama. Um, whoa, we got a troggle on the way. Um, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, uh, Barbados, Canada, um, Guatemala twice. Oh, there's Guatemala. Um, Honduras? Yep. Um, uh, 
Barbados. Okay. Um. Hmm. San Marino, right? Antigua. Okay. Trinidad and Tobago. I thought so. I wasn't entirely sure. St. Lucia sounds right. Um, are we sure about Haiti? Okay. Uh, I don't know my geography very well. Um, Panama? Um, let's see. I don't think Nicaragua is considered a Caribbean country. I think that's considered South America. Haiti appears again. Sweden. Yeah, there we go. Sweden, Brazil, USA, France, Qatar. <laughs> um. Oh, Nicaragua is uh, North American. Okay. Uh, Dominican Republic. Nice. Not military figures. Okay. I'm going to go with Barry Manilow. Oh, nice. And like, bam! Um... Leonard Bernstein. Um, T.S. Eliot, Ray Charles, Joe DiMaggio. Um, um, I'm gonna go with Richie Valens. Doesn't sound like a military name. Um, Eli Whitney, yeah, right, he's, I think, inventor of the cotton gin or something. Omar Brad, oh, did not know this is a military figure. Ethan Allen? Wait, is this so? Okay, shows what I know. Um, now I'm kind of afraid to munch anything. Norman Rockwell? John Pershing is a military figure. Bradley made the Bradley tank. Um, wait, is Bernstein on here again? Where did Bernstein go? Oh, there he is. George Washington. He was just a politician. Um, uh, uh, Amy Lowell. Okay. That makes... I don't recognize many of these names. Um, <clears throat> I should probably turn off the ability to negate these things, to negate clues. Right, yeah, no, I, I get where you're coming from there. Joseph Stillwell. Oh, well, he's not a well-known military figure, I'm going to say. The Unknown Muncher. Yeah, let's do it again. Animals, th not animals that lay eggs. Okay. Um, <laughs> jeez. Okay. Uh, porcupine? Um, giraffe. 
Uh, Bull Weevil does lay eggs. Who knew? Lion. Um, Otter and Deer. Starling is a bird, isn't it? Um, okay, I didn't know what this thing was. Um, I mean, um, <laughs> A what? That's oh, the only mammal that lays eggs. Who knew? Apparently you all knew. Um... Wolverine. It's a Marvel character. Serval is a cat. Okay. Um... Hmm... I'm trying to... Oh, Beluga would be a whale. Oh, there's two different Belugas. Did not know that. That's really interesting. How do you guys know so much? Or how do I know nothing? It's, it's not even fair. Um... Jeez. Okay, so... I don't know what this thing is. Alright. Cody. Um... A woodchuck. Elk. That's like a deer. Um... Bull Weevil does lay eggs. Just kidding. Um, hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, Couscous. All right, not in the camel family. Snow Leopard, Kangaroo. Um, gray whale, cow, cow, dolphin, rat. Oh, you got me now. Um, a bat? No, a guanaco. Is, I mean, okay, I'm just guessing at this point. Are you serious? A dromedary is not in the key? Yeah. Okay, whatever. That was tough anyway. Here we go. Shapes. Oh man. I've so got this one. I'm so good at shapes. Yeah! Not deserts. Um, This one might be harder. Is Rochester a desert? Uh, Tahiti is not a desert. Montreal's not a desert. Uh, Singapore, Bangkok. Um, <laughs> Tonga and Sardinai. Okay. 
Or Sardinia is what you're saying. Havana, Nebraska, Rochester, Tonga, um, Sonoran? Okay. Since I had a cape on, it didn't kill me. I don't know. It's debatable whether Nebraska is a desert. I jest. Um, so yeah, where is... not seeing Sardinia here. Um, Great Sandy. I'm gonna guess that Great Sandy is, in fact, a desert. <laughs> it's a cultural... <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. Invertebrates. Invertebrates. Animals that don't have a vertebrae. Um, they could have made this more confusing by saying not invertebrates. Um... Toad? Toad does have vertebrae. Uh, squid? Conch? Um, trilobites of fish? Slug? Um, uh, oyster? Firefly? Cockroach, slug, scallop. Tuna. Oh. Wow. Really? Okay. I learned something about tuna. Earthworm. Yeah, I didn't even want to touch Ultrasaurus. I'm like, what? Really? Sea anemone. Butterfly. Gnat. Um, a tuna has a skeleton. Owl, squid, not tuna. All right. So which one of these is it? Scorpion, maybe? Yeah, okay. The evil Dr. Frankentroggle wants to create a Frankentroggle monster. To foil this plot, Super Muncher needs... A map that shows the way through the halls of Castle Frankentroggle. The disguised Troggle has the map. Which Troggle is it? Oh man. Which disguised Troggle has the map? Muncher now has the map. After three more levels, you'll help Super Muncher with another mission. Yeah, you're assuming I'm gonna make it three more at level. Oh, caribou. It's not a marsupial. Thylacine? Thylacine is a marsupial. Loris, manatee, uh, lion, sugar glider. Okay, whatever. 
Turns out challenge mode is kind of hard. Sports. Ooh, here we go. Uh, rake. Okay, rake is like a tactic, not itself a sport. Um, field hockey. Track and field. Volleyball, rugby, track and field. Nice. Arthropods. Arthropod. You know, it would be nice if I knew what arthropod meant. That would probably help. Pod means like foot. Um, so yeah, oh, poor the truth, uh, I, okay, what do all these things have in common? <laughs> Cause it's like, pods has to do with feet, uh, Arthro probably has to do with like swelling. But swelling feet doesn't make sense here. Uh, insect like things. Okay. Like silverfish. Um, okay, let's just say insects. Um, Oh, he's just stepped on Nat there. Nat is now Robin. Um, oh, things with exoskeletons. Okay. So, like, a lobster has an exoskeleton. Um, knights, ticks, crabs, lobster, shrimp, etc. Bam! Nice. Um, barnacle. Not insects. Baboon is not an insect. Um, a hare is not an insect. Um, um, a manta ray is not an insect. A wallaby is not an insect. Um, damn. I want to say silverfish is not an insect. A silverfish is, in fact, an insect. Okay. Shows what I know. I'm not keeping up very well with what you guys are typing. Um, that's my fault. This is a bird. Let's see that. If I remember right. Um, cobra is not an insect. Uh, jaguar is probably not an insect. Um, a bin tube with a whatever. I don't know. Um, a serval? Oh, it's a cat, like a skunk. Okay. Huh. A copy. Um. Hmm. Cobra? Cobra is probably not an insect. Um, the 
This is not looking good. Oh. Yeah, couscous. Alright. Can you tell which... <laughs> which disguised muncher that is? Or which disguised troggle that is? You guys are able to figure that out? I know this is challenge mode, so this, this one might be a bit tricky. Gotta vote for one. Ah, heck, we'll go with it. Constellations. Nice. Neptune, I'm pretty sure, is a constellation. Ferrari. Don't forget about Ferrari. It's a pretty famous one. Uh, Thursday. Thursday is definitely a constellation. It's like they weren't trying. Um, Scorpio. Taurus. Scorpio. Pegasus. I'm debating on Ellesmere because I don't know what it is. Oh. Okay. Percussion instruments. gonna be embarrassing if I mess up. Symbols. Honestly, bagpipes are a percussion instrument if played properly, um, which is struck very hard and punctured. Um, Honestly, that's the right way to play bagpipes. Um, could be wrong. Asian or Polynesian? Oh my god. We're screwed, guys. <laughs> um, basically pick out all the Chinese sounding names. Or all the Asian sounding names, rather. I, um, An Wang. Connie Chung, George Ariyoshi. Um, pick out all the Asian sounding names. This is discriminatory in the worst possible way. Um, Prince. Yeah, Prince, definitely. Walt Whitman, um, Stephen Decatur, Susan B. Anthony, Sitting Bull. This is like, I'm surprised that this is actually in the game. You would not get away with this sort of game uh, these days. Um, Pat Morita, I, if you're telling me, I, I'm pretty bad at, uh, history, but I see that name appeared there twice, so 
I figured if I took it once and it was wrong, that's not so bad. But if I got it correct, then I get two words for a price of one. Um, Prince, though. Do we think that Prince is Polynesian American? Carol King, Madonna. All right, where will the Trogle hide the key? Ooh. Oh man, where did the Trogle hide the key? It's a pretty groovy tune. Very impressive. Organs of the human body. The cello. Muscular dystrophy. All right. The rutabaga. Uh, heart, pancreas, bladder, stomach, lung, magnesium, osteoporosis. Um, Rubella, um, man, I don't know, thyroid, there we go, not animals that lay eggs, animals that do not lay eggs, might be a easier way to read that, skunk, skunk does not lay eggs, hamster does not lay eggs, um, Alpaca, kangaroo, um, chipmunk, uh, sea lion. Interesting. All right, yeah. Um, manatee. Roadrunner does, in fact, lay eggs. Oh, because it's a bird. Duh. I got confused about what a roadrunner is. I think it's a bird. Not even sure. Sea lion. Um, beaver. Impala. <laughs> is an impala an animal? I thought that it was like a car model. Um, skunk. Man, all these things keep changing. Um, <laughs> rhinoceros. That made sense. I just would have felt embarrassed if I got that wrong. Um, a gibbon. Hmm. <laughs> ah! So many troggles. A turkey does lay eggs, because again, it's a bird. Why am I so bad at identifying birds? Hippo. Um, a gibbon's an ape. Oh. Did not know that. Lemur? Um. This is intense. Bobcat. Um, narwhal. A lion. Oh, there's lion. A lemur. A beaver. Ocelot, I think. Um, sloth? Rhino? Jeez. 
Jeez, there's so many um, things here. Um, Marmoset. Bat. Kangaroo. Gleamer. Um, so at one point you said stoat, but that's no longer on the board. Um, kangaroo, of course. A dingo, I'm pretty sure. Hair, uh, bat, Whew. munch, munch, munch. There goes my invincibility. Um, sea lion. Another lion. An antelope. Uh, kangaroo. Ocelot. Marmoset. Um, right whale. Lion, um, <laughs> oh, Grouse does not satisfy the rule. Whatever, man, that was rough. That was so brutal. You learn so much playing this. A grouse is a bird. Not African Americans. I'm gonna take Will Rogers, Pat Boone, Walker Percy, Jack Johnson. Oh, Jack Johnson is an African American. Manilo. Sinatra, Hendrix. Okay, I should have known that. I don't mm, follow popular musicians. But that I should have known. Woodrow Wilson, Dolly Parton, Thomas Edison. Mark Hamill. Uh, yeah, I beats me. I'm just gonna keep munching names to avoid further embarrassment. Not countries in Asia. Yem Yemen is in Asia. Okay. Well, I suppose that. Hmm. I would call it Middle East, but I guess Middle East is part of Asia. Um, Alright. Chad. Brazil, Sweden, Denmark. Um, Ghana, St. Lucia. Monaco, Luxembourg, Laos. Oh no, that's around Thailand. Uh, 
Colombia, Tanzania, Tonga, um, Vietnam. Vietnam totally isn't in Asia. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so, but I wanted to know as soon as possible. Um, no, I know. Benin's in Africa. I knew that. Um, okay. Djibouti. Um, I'm going to have to say Fiji, because I don't know where. It's an island, but I don't know not where. Not North American or Caribbean countries. Um, okay. Papua New Guinea's. Oh, St. Lucia is Caribbean. Or Caribbean. Okay. Good to know. Not singers or oh, damn it. Um Abraham Lincoln was totally a singer. Okay. Sandra Day O'Connor, definitely a singer. George Bush, the best singer there ever was. Um that boon shows what I know. Shows what I know. I listen to instrumental music, damn it. It makes us hard. Webster. I have to like be like, well, do I know this name from some other reason? And if so, it's probably not a musician. Uh Evert, okay. Cheney, C H A N E Y, okay. Uh, Unitas and Steinbeck, um, okay. <laughs> ah, Joan Baez happens to be a musician. Despite being the sister of a mathematician. Honestly, I'm just picking names out of a hat at this point. Um, oh, nice. Not Hispanic Americans. Another name for this might be white people. Um, I, it's, there's no way they meant the game to do this sort of thing. Um, like I said, I don't really care about celebrities, so don't be surprised if I make some really obvious mistakes. Uh, that's okay, right? Or do I have to pick other games? Um, Okay, Miller. Where's, oh right, there's Miller. Um, Stonewall Jackson, Chick Corea, no idea, no clue. Composers of the Baroque period. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. My chance to embarrass myself worse than ever before. Oh god. This is terrible. What have I done? Um, what have I done? 
Man, it sure likes Bach. It puts Bach all over the place. I'm not going to look down at the chat window, or at least I will attempt to resist. Because um, I need to do this for my own sanity. Uh, I want to. I'm hesitating on Bruckner. Um. I want to say Kuparan was before the Baroque period. Um, there's Bach and Handel again. Uh, Copeland is later. Puccini. Um, maybe. No, no, that's surely later. Um, I'm so agitated at this point that I don't know this. Yeah, no, List was not from the Baroque period. Uh, List, I believe, was from the Romantic era. It's definitely after Baroque. Baroque refers to a much older form of music. Um, um, uh, maybe, so this gives me a chance to stop and not panic. Um, uh, I need to figure this out. Like, who would I put in the same era as Bach, as, um, well, basically Bach. This is so, oh man. Yeah, no, this is not a kid's game anymore. This is, this is really serious. I won't. Oh, I'm so tempted to throw like no Berlioz is later. Um, my goodness, Copeland is much later. Brahms, I don't know where to place. Ravel is much much later. Ed Bernstein is twentieth century. Vivaldi, I want to say it was after Baroque, but. I'm not, hmm, it depends, like, I don't know what defines the end of the Baroque era. Like, I would not mind taking tests about composers, like, over and over, other than the fact that I'm gonna embarrass myself in the most humiliating possible manner. Well, I have to try Cooper N. I have to know. Cooperan, yes. Okay. I thought that Cooperan would be before Baroque. Um, uh, Hindemith? No. Uh, Copeland is, you know, like I said, much later. Um, ay, ay, ay. Brahms? No, does not fit. That's... Well, that was embarrassing. Honestly. Um, music. We're gonna do music the whole time. Not musical instruments. Uh... <laughs> oh dear. Look at all these. Artichoke. There we go. Artichoke is not a musical instrument. Shih Tzu is not a musical instrument. Broccoli. Silicon. Sonatina. Apple. Oregano. Um, bromine. Turmeric. Um... Where's bagpipe? 
Where is bagpipe? Um, I don't see bagpipe here anywhere. Provolone. I'm just saying. Um, I don't know what bazooki is. It's evidently a musical instrument. Um, <laughs> beagle, right? I thought that might be an animal and an instrument. Okay, there we go. Musical terms. Oh, nice. Scurvy. Scurvy's a good one. Uh, symphony. Garbanzo beans. Baritone. Caffeine. Rhythm key. Motif. Virtuoso, baritone vivace, aspirin, sonata, key. Oh, that was it. Top rock and pop acts of the 1970s. Uh. Uh. Shit. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, I just don't want to embarrass you all, that's all. My my knowledge would so far surpass... Well, okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay. That sounds plausible. That definitely sounds plausible. Uh... <laughs> Um, I am so doomed here. So doomed. Uh, this is horrible. Whoever made this category... I don't know. He has no appreciation for music. We'll use it. We'll say that. So, yeah. I mean, top rock and pop acts according to who? Oh, Chicago was the 70s. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that makes sense, but still, th that dates the game. I mean, kudos to them for also putting in categories for, like, Baroque composers. Um, because that sort of thing lasts a lot longer, at least the famous ones do. Um, Rod Stewart was 70s, if you say so. Um, um, Eurythmics, I think that was an 80s thing. Bee Gees. Oh, Bee Gees are 70s? Okay. Huh. Al Green. Oh. Okay, there's Al Green again. Um, John, Elton John, he's been in there for quite a while then. That's pretty cool. Well, we're gonna munch something before the timer uh, down there expires so we don't die. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't take a hint when I munch something and I still have a cape on. Drifters. Yeah, unfortunately, no. Um, I just need to start making guesses because this, watching me scurry around the board can't be too exciting. Well, 
there goes Paul McCartney. Um, uh, no idea. Not a clue. Oh, here's the Bee Gees. Oh, I got munched. On purpose. Accidentally. Yeah, let's do music again. Let's do some real music things. String instruments, like an English horn and a steel drum. Okay, I deserve that, but that shows what my mental state is right now. Um, just to give you an idea. I have not taken a break in forever, and this is pretty intense, to be honest. Um, uh, okay. Um, timpani. Now wait. Wait a second. Uh, wait a second. Um, steel guitar. Um, um mm -hmm. Yeah, this is tricky. That's probably a flute. Okay, the bazooki is a string instrument. Yeah, you can actually find this one on the Internet Archive. Um, it's like Super Munchers or something. I, I forget exactly what it is. Um, brass instruments. Alright. Trumpet. Trumpet. Cornet, uh, flugelhorn, trumpet, cornet, flugelhorn, sousaphone, alto horn, French horn, flugelhorn, tuba, bugle, um, French horn. Okay. Not musical instruments. Pizzicato. Um, saffron. Cricket. Accordion. <laughs> Shih Tzu. Uh, badminton. Mercury. Potato. Lettuce. Apricot. Uh, mercury. Accordion. According to some, accordion is not an instrument. Alright, oxygen, nutmeg, apricot, cashew. Uh, well, there goes my cape. So... Uh, now comes the hard part. Um, uh... I want to say Cardoon, but I don't know. Quince. Wait. That's like a number. But is it an instrument? Um. Carambola does sound like a calcium. There we go. Well, we're gonna try Crumbola. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm thinking either between Kinsa or Cardoon. I'm not sure which. 
Okay. Wait, what? Fugue is not a musical instrument. Hmm. I want to say Zanza is, so Cardoon can't be. Okay. Guess the Troggle. Which Troggle has the key? Or the map? Or whatever it is. Oh, but the truth, the point is I'm supposed to embarrass myself with things I don't know. Oh wait, we think that the smarty has the map. Ooh. Final answer? Yeah, I know. Obviously it's the worker. Not percussion instruments. Contra bassoon. Uh, fife. Auto harp. Whoa, okay. Um, flugelhorn. Soprano sax. Fife. Um, Soprano sax, steel guitar, ocarina, bagpipes, cello, soprano sax, um, cello, ukulele, um, alto horn. Um, Buzuki? All right. Um, nice. Composers of the Romantic Period. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, 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 okay. We can do this, we can do this. Chopin. Haydn. No, Haydn was pre-romantic. Pre Damn it! Uh, I want this category until I get everything right. Um, Monteverdi? No. Wow, I suck. That's embarrassing. I should not fail that. I should know who are the composers of the Romantic period. It is not composers of the Classical period. Uh, Dvorak is modern. Um... Uh, Holst is modern. Uh, Carl Philip Emanuel Bach is... Oh, classical? Really? Well, I guess that makes sense to be after J.S. Bach. Okay. Okay. Um, got Holst. Gluck. Gluck is classical. Wow. Zug would not be impressed watching me do this. Just saying. Greek. Uh, Sibelius, I believe, was before classical. Um, um, okay, I'm just stressing out at this point. I meant to hit left. Okay, we're gonna try this again. This is supposed to be easy, damn it. <laughs> Not wind, woodwind or reed. You know how like Zug will play uh, Lee Chess until he gets like 2200 or 2300 or whatever that magic number is. 
It's kind of like me with this game right now. I am so agitated that I'm not acing this. But it's actually difficult. And so, not woodwind and not reed instruments. Okay. I now understand what that means. So that'd be like string instruments. That'd be things that you don't blow into. Um, or things that are considered brass instruments and therefore not woodwind. Or percussion. Um, uh, so yeah, vibraphone, certainly. Cymbals, steel drum. Um, plus this might be enlightening to some people. A lute. Are you sure about that? Wait, no, yeah, lute is a stringed instrument. Right. Uh, steel drum, tambourine, balalaika, I believe, is a stringed instrument. Um, soprano sax, I think, is considered brass. Guitar. Gong. What's a flageolet? I don't under. Must be a woodwind or a reed instrument. Curiosity killed the muncher. Um. Bell Lyra. Um. Okay. A Zanza? Uh, Shalm? Oh, Shalm is a woodwind or a reed instrument. Um, but I guess in the interest of retaining an audience, maybe I should switch it up and do something that is less hard for the audience. And just like brutally impossible for me. Um, that's probably a better approach. Not 20th century composers. Oh yeah, we got this. Maybe. Maybe. Vivaldi. Franck. Monteverdi. Vivaldi. Um, Scarlatti. Telemann. Um, Bach. Mozart. Vivaldi, Britain? I'm not sure on Britain. Yeah, I was wrong. All right, we need to do a different category because that's just exhausting everybody. Myself included, because I don't know music as well as I thought I did. So, odds and ends, perhaps? Holidays. Here we go. December. The best holiday. Mars. Mars is the best holiday. Jupiter. Uh, don't, can't forget Jupiter. Um, Alright. Autumn. Autumn is a great holiday. Um, oh, there's Easter. Days of the week. Oh, man. This got like a thousand times easier. Just look for ones that end in day. And most of them are probably days of the week. September. September is a great day. December. Independence Day, a day of every week. I hope you celebrate your independence um, each week. Uh, Friday. Okay, there we go. Games, hearts, marbles, dominoes, jacks, Chinese checkers, AC Dewey, Old Maid, Canasta, Tiddlywing, Blackjack, uh, Hide and Seek, Backgammon, Cribbage, Tiddlywinks, Go, uh, Go. There we go. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the, the monsters change all the 
uh, things. Wow, this got like a hundred times easier when I switched to just odds and ends. Well, yeah, I mean, you consider that I, like, maxed out the difficulty on the game, then the minigames look ridiculous <laughs> by comparison. Not appliances or electrical devices. Not appliances or the electrical devices. Uh, sombrero? Generally not an electrical device. Uh, kale? Yam? Badminton? Sari? Uh, sorry. Alright. Um, cricket, mango, mango, uh, cabbage, kale. Okay, that wasn't so hard. Furniture, uh, bed, nicotine, uh, chair, coffee table. Um, doublet does not fit. Okay. <sighs> wow. Cupboard, end table, caffeine, nicotine, radish, methane. What's up with all the chemical names here? Tablespoon. Tablespoon is totally furniture. Nightstand. Is nightstand here somewhere? Also, what's a PV? I don't know what that is. Seti. Chase. Long? I should probably say lounge. I honestly don't know. Seti. All right, now he's gonna eat the other one. Sofa. All right, Terrigan. Sarong. <laughs> Cruet. Can't say I know what a Cruet is. Um, okay. Not colors. Clef. Clef Adagio. Uh, cape. Ohm. Motif. Sphere. Bowl. Motif. Ohm. Man, this, this game is so easy. Sphere. I don't know what cloche is. Um, scherzo. X. Right, find the key. Where is the muncher gonna hide, or the troggle hiding the key? <sighs> Ooh, where did he hide it? Yeah, I know, this is so hard. Alright. Cars. Oh, damn it. Um... Um... Gouda. Gouda is a car. Big Dipper. Um, all right, so 
Iwo Jima. Totally a car. Oh, we're not gonna see them eat each other. Escort sounds like a car. Um, Trinidad, totally a car. Uh, Wednesday, the best car. Somebody should name a car Wednesday. <laughs> Some of these would be ridiculous car names. I'm just saying. Um, um, okay. Pegasus, unfortunately. Yeah, it'd be a cool car name, though. It's so be a cool car name. Tempo. Who would name a car Tempo? Well, I know somebody who would, but we don't need to go there. Alright, here we go. Ferrari the Big Dipper. Can you imagine if somebody named a car the Big Dipper? Or April. Um, sure, this sounds like a car name. That sounds like a car... No, that is a car name. Um... Oh, Grand Prix is the car name? I thought that was a car event. Not in, in no way a name. August. Trinidad. Sumatra. Okay, well, apparently Spirit was correct. Sports. Uh, cricket. Soccer. Oh, okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay away. Rugby. Um, opera. Debatably a sport. Um, fencing, skiing. Rhenium. Softball. Oh, cool. Not solids at room temperature. Okay. This is going to be a fun one. Okay. Avoid the munchers, or troggles. Radon, oh nice. Bam. Uh, bam. Alcohol, alcohol. Um. Oops, I chopped the wrong one. Actually, beryllium is, uh, huh. Okay. Nitrogen. Um. Xenon is a gas. Fluorine is a gas. Um, uh, helium is definitely a gas. There we go. Super Muncher now needs the secret password that will turn off the robots that guard Frankentroggle's lab. Which word is the password? Eagle, skunk, snake, duck. It's the one behind the tree, so. Not chemical compounds or mixtures. Okay. Not chemical compounds or mixtures. Tungsten. Sodium. Um. Polonium. Thorium, nitrogen, uh, nobelium, um, cadmium, nobelium, rhodium, strontium, ruthenium, 
oxygen, nitrogen, uranium, um, neon, lithium, uh, oxygen, Oh, nitrogen, um, palladium, okay, um, hafnium, okay, neptunium, cadmium, there we go, tools. Pickaxe, drill, pliers, physique, nope, spade, sledgehammer, scraper, crowbar, scraper, um, hatchet, pitchfork, uh, sledgehammer, file hatchet but I dare not touch that hatchet's still there okay there we go planets oh here we go Pluto Mars Mercury Integra Pluto Pluto Saturn Uranus 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 Mercury Saturn, Jupiter, Jamaica, Cuba, Festiva, Tracer, nice. Super Muncher will now fly to Castle Frankentroggle high atop a cliff. But a troggle is dropping numbers, rocks, and anvils down at Super Muncher. While flying up the cliff, Super Muncher must catch all of the numbers, but avoid rocks and anvils. Use the joystick mouse or right and left arrow keys to guide Super Watcher. So you have to get all the numbers. All right. Ah! Damn it! Okay, that, those controls are pretty delicate. Not gases at room temperature. Uh, silver. Um... Krypton is, in fact, a gas at room temperature, and I knew that. I was just testing the game. That's all. Um, things that are not gases at room temperature. Oh, okay. Wow. Did not expect to see... Um, welcome. Yeah. Uh, we are... We are learning what gases are at room temperature. Um, but mostly not getting eaten alive by the troggles. Jeez. Um, so... Wait, iodine is a liquid. Polonium is a solid. Titanium is a solid. Um, chlorine is definitely a gas. Silicon. Some of the higher chemicals, like I'm not sure about tellurium and neptunium and such. Plutonium's a solid. I mean, these have got to be heavy things. They're solids. Manganese, I'm pretty sure, is a solid. Whoa, okay. Um, uh, so, arsenic. I don't know about cerium, but since I haven't heard of it, it's almost certainly not a gas. Yeah, some of this stuff gets pretty intense. Aluminum. Fortunately, the um, troggles change the answers. So that makes it a little bit easier as long as you don't get hit. Uh, shoot, silver is up there. Uh, I'm just afraid to approach. Paper. 
not an element, but definitely not a gas. Milk. All right. Um, neodymium's a solid. Polonium's a solid. Um, fluorine's a gas. Um, Okay, silver's over there, but two troggles are approaching. All right, here we go. And now suddenly we become invincible, and anytime we encounter the troggle on top of a word, uh, the word just goes splat off the board. Um, germanium, magnesium. Um, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Troggles eat each other, too. That works in my favor. Um, okay. Three Troggles approach. Um, all from that side. That helps. At least in the short term, it helps. Okay. We're over here. Um... Iodine is a liquid. Oh man, how can there still be a, something that's not a gas on the board? Cobalt. Um, cadmium, aluminum, cerium, um, boron. So boron is a solid. Like carbon, it's right next to carbon on the table. Osmium, cadmium, nitrogen's a gas, argon's a gas, oxygen's a gas, germanium, strontium. I want to get strontium down there. Um, antimony. Okay, paper. Um, Man, these are going on for a while. Platinum. Um, Krypton's a gas. Yeah, they just keep adding stuff. At least one of them. Some of them do tend to add a lot of stuff. The red one that just munches other troggles, the troggles normalist, has not yet appeared. Um, and that makes me sad. But I, I don't think he's going to appear again anytime soon. Acetylene is a gas, I'm pretty sure, because there's an acetylene torch. Methane is flammable gas, or reactive. Um, germanium, nice! Not shapes. All right. Puce. Oh. Here we go. Solo, helium, puce, chess, tan, lavender, chess. Um, uh, oblong is an adjective that describes the shape of a thing, but is it not is itself not a shape. Um, autumn. Um, I've certainly heard people refer to an oblong as a shape, but that doesn't make it right. Okay. Not metals. Oh dear. Oh me oh my, what have we done? Uh, Krypton's a gas. Alcohol's not a metal. Uh, fluorine, not a metal. Iodine. Oxygen, cinnamon, xenon, arsenic, sulfur, um, iridium, 
think iridium's a gas. Uh, acetylene. <sighs> strontium? Oh, strontium is a metal. Alright, we've been duped. We've been duped, guys. Astatine. Yes. All right, we're gonna try not to mess up the controls this time. Why do I have to collect all the numbers anyway? There we go. Whew! Very good. Super Muncher has made it to the top of the cliff. Oh. I have to complete three more levels. <sighs> and that only... I only get to see what happens when the Super Muncher enters the lab of Dr. Frank and Troggle. <sighs> okay, not clothing. Circle, circle... Uh, sofa, bromine, cookie cutter, hammer, paprika, radio, spoon, mint, um, television, generally not considered clothing, rubato, niacin, dashiki, probably some kind of scarf. Um, telephone, television, uh, bromine, koto, cyan, curry, cyan, symphony, um, Shiki is, in fact, clothing. So, okay, this gives me a second to think. Um, so, Shiki is clothing. Sofa is not clothing. Symphony is not clothing. There we go. We got it. Units of measurement. Oh, mile, pound, pound, yard, sombrero, yard, inch, rod, um, hour, gram, uh, milliliter, jewel. Gram, ton, gram, cheddar, uh, jewel, hour, pound, foot, pint, second, jewel, hour, uh, jewel, um, there we go, not months of the year. This is so embarrassing because I know I'm going to mess it up. Not months of the year. Not months of the year. Not months of the year. Uh, Thanksgiving's not a month of the year. Uranus is not a month. Um, Venus. Easter. Okay. Independence Day. By its name. Monday. Alright, we got it. All we have to do is see what happens next. All right, so time for intermission. What do you think? No, okay, let, let's see what happens. Yeah, Christmas is like three months now. I hear you. All right. I've not seen this before. Frankenstein's monster. Or Frankentroggle's monster. Oh! Congratulations! Super Mon Muncher has defeated Dr. Frankentroggle. But the mad doctor has escaped! After three more le Oh no. 
No. Okay. Well, it's a fun game. Uh, yeah, it really does. I mean, some people try to start it before then. Um, yeah. Attempts to start it before Halloween are simply disgusting. Attempts to start Christmas before uh, Thanksgiving are unfortunate. But, yeah, doing it before Halloween is... It's like, really? Is that... I mean, America really needs some solid, like, Thanksgiving time hymns and songs and such. We need a stronger Thanksgiving tradition. It, it shouldn't just be one day where you watch football. It really should be a greater celebration. Um, celebrating just uh, the Native American heritage and the harvests and... Um, you know, the colonists and their first winters and such. Um, there really should be more appreciation for that sort of thing. Especially if we're going to have some sort of, like, national identity where we all rally behind a flag and anytime somebody says something that, like, is even remotely, I don't know, I'm trying to be generic here in stating my political stance and yet try to make sense to a whole bunch of people and it's really tough to do. But yeah, if people could just like not lose their minds when other people do things that's slightly outside of patriotic, if we could get away from this hyper patriotism or if we're going to be patriotic at least have more of a culture about it, that would be kind of nice. Oh well. Kitchen utensils. Ooh, barium. Barium's boots. I use boots in my kitchen all the time. Solitaire. No, seriously, how are there any... Okay, kettle. Kettle's a kitchen utensil. Sifter. Um, a cup. Cup is certainly a kitchen utensil. I'm glad to see Troglis Normalis back here. Almost so glad I want to just let him munch um, the muncher. An ottoman. Uh, oh, bottle opener. That works. Uh, sieve. Cleaver. Um, <sighs> so. Also, I thought I had um, a cape going into this. Juicer, colander, a ladle, colander. A colander is a pitcher, for those wondering. Sifter, <clears throat> boots, uh, skirt. Depends what kind of kitchen you're running. Um, bottle opener, soprano, hopscotch, um, cruet. Okay, so I have no idea what a cruet is, but it's a kitchen utensil. A pitcher. Um, sifter. Oh, a grater, of course. Of course. Not constellations. Oh, I'm gonna avoid the edges of the board while Troggles march on. Uh, April, Portia, Rosh Hashanah, Borneo. This is, this is a fun category. Not constellations. Oh my gosh. As fun as the category is. Oh, okay. My game had locked up there for a second because I got killed on the corner of the board as a troggle entered. Um, as fun as it is, I'm not the best at it. Trinidad. Um, Beretta. 
a cord. It's kind of car. Um, There we go. Chemical elements. Sulfur. Oh, propane's a mixture or a compound. Um, it's a chemical. Um, cadmium. Chromium's a browser, but it might also be a chemical. I don't know. Neodymium. I want to say chromium is not. Well, I don't know. It's listed here twice. It's got to be a chemical. They wouldn't list something so many times if it were just a red herring. Uh, lanthium, sulfur, um, tuba. Okay, chromium is a chemical. I want to say indium. Erbium, I've never heard of. But of all these, it's the most likely. Okay. All right, a disguised Troggle has the map. Which Troggle is it? Can you identify that Troggle? It's like Blue's Clues. Man, when's Reggie gonna get the map? I've never seen Reggie have it. I'm just saying. Not sports. Stomach, cadence, clutch, cravat. Um, hockey's not a sport. Um, cabbage, arsenic, hexagon. Armoire, Tuxedo, Parka, um, Telephone, Kettle, oh, I'm no longer invincible, um, so I should watch my step. Harmonium, sledgehammer, okay, we got it. Not gases at room temperature, okay. Uh, lead, uh, paper, um, man, I'm tired. <laughs> Okay, bronze, uh, cesium, ruthenium, tin, silicon, um, plutonium. Man, it's so good that they have this munch meter. I just wish it kind of like increased a little bit faster for more challenging things. Um, ruthenium, potassium, samarium, paperium, um, iodines of liquid. Uranium, hmm, this is tricky. Oh, uranium, of course. Um, plutonium, copper, uh, uranium. Nickel, paper, uh, 
ions, uranium. There we go. Cars. Oh man. Uh, Cuba, Iwo Jima. Um, Okinawa. Uh, Wednesday. Uh, shoot. Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Uh, Gouda. <laughs> oh, man. Wednesday. Sumatra. Okay. Sumatra does not fit the rule. Cars. That's a bummer. Oh well. What can you do? All thing all good things have to end at some point. Um Camaro. Jetta and Silica. Okay. Oh. Did not know that. Uh, okay, where's the Troggle gonna hide the key guys? Oh yeah, but um, you missed earlier too, like, there's, you could play this game in challenge mode for um, music, and it'll quiz you on like 20th century composers, classical era composers, baroque era composers, and like that was super intense. And compare that with um, the, just this odds and ends category, and it's like night and day. But it'd be most amusing, because um, I know uh, a chess player who, uh, by profession, uh, is um, he's quite a music expert, we'll say. Um, and so he makes a profession entirely based around music, and it's fantastic. And it's just incredible how much he knows compared to the rest of us. It'd be fun to uh, ask him to play this game and set it on the music category, and he just like blast right through it without anything of a challenge. Um, yeah. And then he could probably go on and make his own version of the game and put in just completely esoteric music things that nobody knows except him. That'd be just fantastic. That'd be the most brutal thing ever done. Uh, and I don't know. A while ago I had fun with Pandora uh, trying to figure out like what's the most obscure radio that you can create and I think I created one based around organist uh, Clarenbaum which none of you have heard of um, but yeah it's just fantastic that you could create a radio station based around like 13th 14th century composer whose music is virtually unheard of and then try to find similar music. And you just get the weirdest matches because the matching algorithm has no idea what to do. Um. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that though. It's too obscure for them to have it in there. Yeah, now I found it that it's true. Um, like things I'd want to search for weren't in there. Uh, although I probably joined much later than you did, but it's still interesting to push the limits of the software and just see um, what can be done with it. But yeah, I'm sure over time they um, have expanded their capability as every business does, or competitors arise and just beat them down. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so we got that right. All right, planets. Venus, Earth, Jupiter. When are they going to have, like, extra solar system planets in here? Oh, I typoed. I would... I hit the wrong button because I'm trying to talk and type. Oh well. I was eaten by a Trogolus Smarticus. Of all the ways to go, that's probably the most noble. Oh, that's cool. It'd be... oh. Shoot. Now I have to actually pick a name. You know, they don't prompt you for this up front, although maybe they should. Although now, I guess as a game design element, you feel more of a sense of achievement putting your name in after it. And then you're like, oh wow, it's prompting me for my name. I feel all important for putting my name in there. Um, so we'll go with my chess account name. Uh, not like this is going to stay in there. Because uh, this is played on the internet archive anyway. Um, but yeah, chances are almost everybody can beat the score of 28,405. Really wasn't playing it for the score, just for the fun of it. But, you know, for those of you who like numbers, um, I guess feel free to go for it. Uh, you can find this game on the Internet Archive. Uh, it's just archive.org. Yeah, it's such a great game. So, you know, we saw earlier we were playing a variety of um, mech games. The Minnesota Educational Consulting Corporation? That's not right. Computing Corporation? Yeah, Educational Computing Corp. Mech. Um, designed a number of games. I think this, they initially released Number Munchers in 1985. And then thereafter had like word munchers and fraction munchers and uh, eventually evolved into super munchers, which just got outrageously popular, uh, even much more so than number munchers. And it's kind of great. Um, you'd actually see computers at schools uh, set up and it being used as an educational tool. Not just for number munchers per se and uh, similar muncher games, but also uh, things like the Oregon Trail became quite popular. And there's educational value in that. Uh, for those who have a curiosity for like the music and the culture and that sort of thing, there's some educational value. Um, um, you, it's not entirely just going around traveling and um, shooting things. There's much more to just mech games. And that's quite impressive, just given that these were originally based on Apple II hardware and Apple II programming language. And it's just difficult to code anything in that language. I know I've tried. It's, it's written pretty much like basic. Um, so uh, it takes a lot of code to achieve anything useful. And they just excelled at making these sorts of things. I'm sure as languages became more robust, uh, it became easier to make games like this, but it's still quite an achievement for its time. Um, so yeah. Is there a title sequence or something I can look at? Uh, let's go back to information. Helps you develop your recognition and category... Hmm. Recognition skills and categorizing skills. I want to say recognition and categorization skills, but that might be going over the top. Um, your vocabulary and knowledge in several areas, including social studies, science, music, and pop culture. <laughs> and dated, obscure pop culture, maybe. I don't know. My opinion. Uh, in this game, your job is to move the muncher and have it eat the correct items. The correct items are those to match the rule at the top of the screen. Uh, careful, you'll lose muncher if it eats the wrong item, or if it gets caught by a triangle. It 
man, it's so frustrating that this game has, like, so many troggles. On the other hand, um, once you became good enough in the game, then the troggles are basically the only challenging aspect. Um, but you have to become really good at it. It'd be fun to see this submitted for a GDQ. But you'd have to be, like, ridiculously knowledgeable. And I'm not sure that you could do anything meaningful to route the game. Still, it'd be amusing to see. If you munch 20 correct items in a row, a transformation cell appears. And then you can become super muncher and destroy troggles. Um, I wonder how much of that steals from Pac-Man. Um, what? You're kidding. Well, that's just hacking. Uh, I'm sorry, that's... I don't know about this. Oh man. Well, that makes routing this game a lot more interesting. <laughs> uh, if you can route it at all, but... No, that... that... No, that's horrible. How does this game have this feature and nobody knows about it? Or at least I didn't know and you didn't tell me. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah. That, that's, uh, that's unacceptable and at the same time it's hilarious. Um, this would actually make, uh, it makes learning a lot uh, more possible. So if I want to learn more about like what's considered a uh, reed instrument or what's considered an uh, animal that doesn't lay eggs, um, that sort of thing, you could actually learn a lot with Super Muncher and just pressing the V key to dismiss all the wrong answers. That's pretty cool. At the same time, that kind of breaks the game. But if the objective is learning, yeah, then by all means. Um, very clever. Forces kids to learn things and to cheat while doing it. <sighs> hmm. I wonder if you bring super munchers into the cutscenes. It'd be awesome if you could use the V key to dismiss all the wrong answers from those minigames, too. Just saying. Alright, use the arrow keys. If you have a mouse... Oh. If you want to munch the item, you could actually play this game with a mouse. Uh, I knew that this was playable with joystick, because I've actually, on one occasion, played it with a joystick. If I remember right. I might be remembering a different game, but yeah. Um, pause in the middle of the game, press the enter key to continue, press... You could pause the game. <sighs> it's like I should read the instructions before playing. But this wasn't listed as instructions. This was listed as um, other information or whatever. Um, All right, so software team responsible uh, include Craig Copley, Egg Gratz, L. Lothrop, Diane Portner, Julie Redland, Dee Dee Rodell, Steve Splinter, and Wayne Studer. I think we saw that Julie Redland was also part of the teams that produced the um, previous games, uh, as was Ed Gratz, if I remember. Um, Interesting. Yeah, that wasn't listed as instructions. That was called information. <sighs> I've been duped into not reading the instructions, but perhaps that's a gameplay mechanic to encourage people to just try the game and not worry about reading all the directions. If so, it did encourage me to play the game. 
Um, and I'm sure it would encourage new people to just hit the first option. But... Oh! Wow, there's a demo? How much did I not know about this game? Okay, well... I suppose, um, to take a saying, uh, my ignorance is encyclopedic. An actual quote, I forget who it's attributed to. But, yeah, I'm impressed just how little I knew about this game. But at least I know my chemicals, and I know my elements, and I know my noble gases, and reactive things, and solids, and liquids, and so forth. So at least I know the chemicals. I guess that's what science classes instilled at some point. Well that, and um, another, it was a Sierra game, um, The Lost Mind of Dr. Brain, I think. There's just a variety of computer games that really obsess with chemical names. So, um, I'll have to show that at some point. But yeah, feel free to find this game, uh, Super Munchers, on archive.org. Give it a shot yourself. Anywho, let's see, how long have I been going for here? I remember right, and I think I do. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, so yeah, we've been going for a while. Um, I'm sure you all probably want a break as much as I do at this point. So, uh, I don't have anything prepared up next. Um, and besides, I need to have food. So, hope you had a lot of fun watching this and maybe even learned a thing or two about what planets are, what days of the week are, um, what holidays and months and colors and shapes, and 20th century composers and musical terms and you know, musical instruments and just everything. Yeah. I've already forgotten what a cruet is, unfortunately. Which, for the purposes of retention, now I need to look it up. C R U E T. Put that over here. Also called a caster, is a small, flat bottom vessel with a narrow neck. Uh, they often have an integral lip or spout, and may have a handle. Huh. Often holds like vinegar or oil. Oh, I've seen a crew with that. Okay, cool. That's so cultured. Um, so yeah, hope we've all learned something together. If only it's that we're able to do more learning, you know, outside of. Um, where you'd be traditionally asked to learn things. You can actually go learn things on your own. Um, there's quite a bit to be learned. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, just spend at least a few minutes a day learning something. <laughs> Storing bacon grease. Yeah, that sounds, sounds like a good use of... Or, it, I guess. But usually tend to think of it as a dispenser for something you want on your food. Um, but maybe you do. Maybe you do like bacon grease. Who am I to judge? I like how the description here is not nuts, and then the, down there it says like Brazil nut, um, walnut, um, just like things that blatantly have the word nut in them. Oh, Metrogolus Assistus. 
Yeah, by the way, each uh, Troggle has a different power. Like a normal Troggle just goes through, doesn't change anything. Or doesn't, like, replace a word with a word. Um, I think a Troggleus Assistus will add some words, as will that blue Troggle also adds words. I'm oh, sorry, the purple one adds words. The green one randomly adds and removes words, I think. Um, Spartacus tends to add more complicated words, I think. I'm not sure. But you guys probably already know all this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I've, I've certainly seen um, brief videos of uh, bacon grease, among other chemicals, being applied to food uh, as it cooks. Um, but yeah, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like something you would apply as a condiment. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something they. Oh, I thought you were going to go, like, Parks and Recreation, that sort of thing, but, um, yeah, I'm sure South Park would do that sort of thing, too. Countries in Europe. Man, Mech is such a great company, though. At some point, I was thinking that I was going to make a game that was, like, ridiculously difficult, but otherwise like Super Munchers. And they've already done it, and this was done decades ago. And somehow I didn't know about this. So, this is pretty special. Um, I was thinking, like, this seems like exactly the sort of thing you'd expect in a Flash game um, a few years ago. It would be somebody just making something that's like uh, categories where it's like capital cities with GDP above or below some threshold. Um, just some ridiculous clues. Um, um, games in which, I don't know, you could categorize any kind of game and make that game category just the clue and leave it to people to identify what things do and do not satisfy said category. And you could even expand upon this game concept if you wanted to by allowing people to submit their own custom levels and allowing players to submit new items into categories. Um, so you could have like a category for multiplayer online network games in which the main character has a name which is exactly five letters. You could make that a category. I don't know why you would, but it would make the game more challenging and all the more impressive for those able to pass it. Um, you could make a category games released in the year 1993. You could make a game um, computer games which uh, don't have like an intro animation but only have a title card. You could. There's all kinds of crazy stuff you could do. And the potential to expand upon this, maybe even leveraging things like Wikimedia and Wikipedia and other sources, just make the game like infinitely expandable and as easy or as difficult as you want to make it and capable of covering any possible subject. That would be crazy. Games for which a sequel exists. Well, that would be something that would have to be updated, but I don't know. It still seems to me there's a lot that could be done with this concept that wasn't done back in the 90s. And yet, in spite of that, back in the 90s, this sort of thing just, I don't know, continues to be an impressive game today uh, for what was released so long ago. So, I don't know that I could praise this game much more. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the game is difficult, there's tons of troggles everywhere. 
I want more content than there is, although there's already quite a bit of content. Um, thankfully, the easy levels are pretty easy to beat. Oh, there was actually a version of this game, I think Word Munchers, which there were categories about words that rhyme with each other. And this like included slant rhymes. And it was horrifying and fun at the same time. I, I think people... Um, people do have... I don't know. Not everybody is scared away by games that are difficult, and some people actually choose to play games because they're difficult. Because they're kind of good at the game, or that sort of category of game, and it's difficult. Like, I can't imagine that people would play I Wanna Be The Guy if it was super easy. I can't imagine people would play Super Meat Boy um, if it were that easy. But I think there's a place for difficult games. But most of it, unfortunately, doesn't fall in this kind of educational category. Maybe someday. Maybe someday there'll be a way to make this more like Typing of the Dead or something where there's a dexterity and agility component to it. Um, and maybe a multiplayer component or something, I don't know. Maybe somebody will find a way to make this viable as a concept for like a learning platform for people trying to learn new subjects. Which reminds me of what I should be streaming next. Um, yeah, so next I'll probably... Wow, this category. This is a strong category. Countries whose chief religion is Islam. Holy moly. Um, I'm not sure that I can do that category. That's impressive. Like, how did they come up with this? It's amazing that they only credit eight people in their credits list. Australia does not fit the rule. Countries whose chief religion is Islam. This is true. Um, yeah, I'm sure even at the time, especially, I don't know, like, how does anybody collect all this knowledge? Or do they just, like, go to a university? Try to meet up with as many professors as possible and ask, what do you think would be interesting questions um, for us to have kids learn? I mean, that might have been something here. Maybe they consulted the state of Minnesota or something and looked at the curriculum and looked at published books and just picked random things out of books. I don't know how they did this, but it's impressive just how much knowledge there is. Anyway. Also, um, yeah, who did the music and the composing for this game? I want to know. If they weren't listed in the credits, uh, I really hope they were. But if they weren't, I'd still like to know who did it. In any event, um, yeah, I think next time I'll probably be returning to playing um, some more Hiragana Warriors. Um, I know it's a crazy game, but somebody's got to play it. So, yeah, I think we've all learned and appreciation, appreciated something together. I'm stumbling over my words because I haven't eaten anything other than snacks in many hours. So, uh, it's probably a good time to call it here. Hope it's been fun. The challenge continues. Oh yeah, and I did mention this, but really, do go check it out on archive.org. There's tons of great games there, um, all released into the public domain. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you had fun. Um, sorry I didn't know more than I do know. But now I know more than I did know. So maybe next time, I'll know even more. Thanks for watching, see you next time.